in my work life, I have built a web search engine called at sign. One of the challenges of building search engines is that you need to do something called tokenization. If you don't know, tokenization is the process of turning raw text into smaller units, such as individual words or terms. From what I remember, it was a real pain while developing at sign, even with libraries like NLTK and Spacey, which can do tokenization for you. Which got me thinking, with this uh, development of GPT-3, how it just came out in July, I wondered if GPT-3 could be used for tokenization. Well, I set out to do just that, and today I'm gonna be sharing my findings. I started by going to the OpenAI website and navigating to the playground. This is just sort of like a rough interface where you can enter random stuff and see what GPT-3 says in response. So I entered a query and got the response back from GPT-3. So I started with just one example. I wrote a sentence. I said, please tokenize the following sentence, colon. And then I found a random sentence from some random tutorial online on tokenization. And the sentence they chose is, God is great, exclamation mark. I won a lottery, period. I then included the sample output for GPT-3. So I wrote output colon, and then I included what that list should look like once it's been tokenized. So this is uh, altogether one example, a complete example. You can see the sentence with the instructions up top, then you can see output, and then underneath is an example of the output that I want. And notice here too that you know, the output is putting the exclamation mark separately as its own thing, as well as the period. Just something to keep in mind. Then uh, I was ready to ask GPT-3 to try to tokenize. And so I gave it a sentence. I was randomly listening to Drake. So I gave it the sentence, Kiki, do you love me? And of course there's an exclamation mark and a question there. And shockingly, drum roll, this is the output that it gave me. I couldn't believe it was able to do it. So I went to Wikipedia, I found a random article, in this case on skew morphism. This is that kind of design style that, you know, Steve Jobs, while he was running Apple, sort of insisted on for iOS and Mac OS. Uh, anyways, I found a random paragraph from that article. It was a really difficult one. And I gave that to OpenAI's GPT-3 API as well. And so the sentence reads, you know, the term skew morph is compounded from skewos, uh, meaning container or tool. You can notice the Greek characters in that sentence too, and uh, how unique they are with the accents and stuff up top. And morphe, meaning shape. It's even got a citation there with square back brackets. So it was a really complex sentence. And surprisingly, this is the output GPT-3 gave me as well. I was pretty shocked. It handled the Greek characters well, punctuation reasonably well. Like I'm happy that it even just split it into its own thing. It didn't skip over stuff. One, one thing that it didn't do is it didn't uh, escape the quotes, the single quotes uh, in the sentence as well, but that's okay. <laughs> in my final test, I wondered if I could get it to escape strings. So this time I gave it two examples instead of the one example from before. And the example that I gave included the uh, single quotes in it, just as, and I, I also included like what it would look like if it was properly escaped. So I think I gave it the sentence, Charles never would have given up. I know that for a fact. And just manually, I escaped the strings for would have, and just to, just to see if even one example where the string is escaped would be enough for GPT-3. So then I gave GPT-3 the sentence, would have, could have, should have, period. Too little, comma, too late. So there's three iterations there, or sorry, three instances there where GPT-3 would need to escape the single quote strings. And then I gave it that sentence and let it perform the tokenization, and I was shocked. You ready for this output? This is what it gave me. So just with two examples or two shots, we were able to get a decent proof of concept for working tokenization through GPT-3. I, I just, I was so blown away by it. I was, you know, I took it just a little bit further. And so here I've compiled uh, just a sort of a rough table to compare GPT-3 with NLTK and Spacey. These are their out of the box approaches to tokenization and given the same sentence how did they react you can see in my opinion with these four sentences OpenAI has a pretty comparable level of results with the other two models and you know just to reiterate OpenAI is trained with two examples <laughs> 
right? And basically, this is all that was necessary. I basically wrote English and I was able to get it to do tokenization. And I'm, I'll let you compare the results for yourself. Maybe if there are some key differences in the comments, please point them out. But to me, I would say this is a pretty good quality, uh, really impressive. Overall, actually, I'd say the results were very impressive. In two shots, basically two examples, I was able to create a fairly reasonable working tokenizer with GPT-3 capable of escaping strings too. And I mean, the crazy thing is, I mean, in the past, you would have needed a library like NLTK or Spacey, which take up a little bit of size, just as libraries, you need to download data sets as well when you first load them. And I mean, it's just crazy that you don't need those libraries that GPT-3 can basically do it out of the box just with basic English instructions. This would have been unheard of even last year, in my opinion. Now, there are some caveats. I don't want to hype this up too much. Uh, for sure, Spacey does a lot more and they actually have a perspective on tokenization, right? For example, uh, given the city like NY, N dot Y dot, uh, Spacey would treat it as one unit, basically. So it would just be NY. Uh, it wouldn't split it up. I, I suspect in our case, uh, GPT-3 would split the N, the dot, the Y, the dot into separate units. And there's some other stuff too going on behind Spacey's tokenization, which I think is pretty clever. And they're also doing other stuff with it, right? like uh, entity recognition. So their use case is different, but still, you know, this isn't necessarily with GPT-3 a sophisticated perspective on tokenization. You can get really detailed about it, but I still think it's impressive as a proof of concept, especially only with two examples, right? I would be curious to see what else you could do if you further made more, gave it more examples. The other caveat is I did notice sometimes uh, there is some unintended behaviors from GPT-3. Sometimes, you know, it isn't, it will just include extra stuff for some reason while tokenizing the outputs. And also too, I notice if you don't control the output length, it will just keep ranting on and on just with random text, uh, which sort of tells me it's not fully intelligent or even sentient yet. Uh, otherwise it would come to a complete stop definitively at the end of the output, knowing the sentence has been tokenized. Like even if it has the, the flexibility to keep going on because there's more characters left it just if it actually understood what it was doing it would stop once the sentence has been perfectly tokenized and that's it i also suspect there's going to be unintended behaviors if you just took this gpt3 example and applied it on a really large corpus of text uh, i i know from experience having built a web search engine that raw data parsed from the web is often very diverse it features many many characters in different languages different encoding formats like not everything is in utf8 sometimes you have javascript in there sometimes you know there's parts of the web that are still old or they have iframes embedded within iframes uh so anyways like that kind of stuff can make it into the corpus of text right and so i suspect gpt3 would not only be able to to not handle that with these training examples, only these two, but I suspect it would really go off the rails. Like it would start even changing the text, uh, what it says on the web page to something else that it thinks it's trying to say. But I'm still optimistic GPT-3 or potentially in the future GPT-3, GPT-4, excuse me, can be molded to handle these scenarios at a larger scale on a larger corpus of text. I mean, another downside is obviously speed, NLTK and especially Spacey are designed to perform tokenization on a huge Huge scale on a large corpus of text. This is an area I actually think could be could use further research just to compare because I didn't have time really to benchmark the performance of Spacey and NLTK against against GPT-3 for tokenization. But my suspicion is that if you could run GPT-3 locally inside of RAM, like because right now you have to do it through the API and it has to do network effect, it has to do a network call and wait for the response. I, I suspect that if you ran it locally, it would outperform Spacey and other libraries by a huge factor. Also, if you could kind of strip GPT-3's model size down to just the relevant parts in the neural network for tokenization, it would probably be very blazing fast, in my opinion. I don't know if this can be done with transformers, to be honest, I'm not a machine learning researcher, but I have come across the papers talking about the lottery ticket hypothesis, which is just about that, like pruning neural networks to get the relevant parts that you want. Uh, despite these caveats, 
I was blown away and I look forward to messing around with GPT-3 more. I did some light experiments here and there and noticed GPT-3 is also capable of doing fairly commendable sentence tokenization representations as well. So it can take text, paragraphs in text and turn that into units of sentences. This is really awesome right out of the box. And also I think this, just so you know, sentence tokenization is also an interesting sort of subfield within NLP. This has been one of those classic NLP CS problems for a long time now. So it's just crazy that GPT-3 can do it out of the box. One crazy thought I'm gonna leave you with, GPT-3 itself was trained on a tokenized corpus of text. The way you create GPT-3 is you need to tokenize text and feed it into GPT-3. The crazy thing that I realized while working on this video and just experimenting is that in the future, GPT-4 could technically be trained on text tokenized by GPT-3 and so on. Just something to think about. Over the next few days, I'm gonna continue sharing different capabilities I've discovered for GPT-3 and all my findings. If you're interested in following along on my journey, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.